and welcome to another video tutorial with Märklin of Sweden. You know what this is? It's uh, Swedish Midsummer. So we're gonna have a bit of a summer, midsummer uh, uh, theme for this uh, tutorial. Uh, what is the Swedish Midsummer about? Well, it's uh, we're celebrating the longest day of the year. You know, it's kind of dark here, a long time of the year during the winter. So we're very happy when it's uh, actually getting light again. <laughs> and it's also the time for uh, harvesting. Back in the days when everyone was farmers, uh, they they completed the harvest at this time. So it was kind of a celebration. We'll look see what it looks like today. So we gather all the families and friends on, on the fields uh, like this and do some uh, traditional dancing and the lottery. I just love the lottery and you know I never win anything but uh, you know I have to build one of these lottery barracks. So that's what we're gonna do and the midsummer pole. Oh it's awesome. You gotta have one of those. This is what our diorama would look like when we're completed. What we're gonna do today is mainly this uh, red uh, dove-tailed uh, barrack, which is built on, on logs like in old days. Yo, I went down to the celebration area, took a few photos and measured. So then it's just for me to bring that photo up in the phone and make some calculations of the dimensions for the model in HO scale which is 1 to 87 so I cutting it this is made from 1.5 millimeter thick balsa sheet so as usual I'm using a, a figure which is in the right scale to compare I measured the, the logs and they're about three millimeters wide so I cut them to three millimeter or I mark position in each end and I use the back side of the blade to engrave the, the spacing between the logs. All right so here are all the logs now engraved. Now I'm using a steel brush to give a bit more of a texture to the surface. You know, I wanted to you know, have this uh, old log style cracked surface, which the actual barrack didn't have because it's kind of uh, new. It's built newly by the, the local club. I then just add a bit of paper tape. Do not stretch the tape, just apply it flat on the back side of this balsa sheet. The purpose with the tape backing is of course to prevent the balsa from cracking when we're cutting out the windows and the door openings. And it's made with a razor blade like this. And once you push through it's just to remove the window. Now we're assembling the bottom part with one wall and I do that by just adding some fast set glue in the corners, checking the angle so it looks right. And first after that I apply fast set glue over the entire length. For the dovetail part I remove the tape first, then I add the engraved edge or short side of the barrack like this and then I fix it with facet glue. The dovetailed front side pieces I make those from cutouts of the balsa with the tape still sitting on the back to prevent uh, cracking again and make sure that you engrave this you know half ways onto the logs so you don't follow the pattern in the wall because then it will end up all wrong <laughs> there will be no dovetail so and this is what it looks like when they are glued in place now it's time to just attach also the rear wall in this barrack i do that in the same manner with the fast set glue 
starting with the edges and then continuing with the complete section. Now I will paint the interior. I looked from my film, they had painted the entire T interior white, so I also paint that with a white uh, uh, acrylic paint. Now it's time to paint the outside of the barrack, and it's uh, what we call in Sweden Faluröd, which is uh, a brownish red, like corrosion red type color. So I apply that with a brush onto the entire outside of this barrack. So there it is. The doors is made from pre-engraved sheets of wood from northeastern scale lumber. And I combined two of them to get this angular shape of the panel in the door. Then I had to do some fitting with the um, sanding block to get the middle walls into a perfect fit. Then I fix it with the facet glue and I remove excess facet glue with a cotton pin or cotton swab. I cut the window casing from the same uh, pre-engraved panel from northeastern scale lumber. I paint that black according to the prototype with acrylic black paint. Then I take measurements to make the roof. The roof has a base of 1.5 mm thick balsa. I'm gonna do some weathering and apply the door steps before I assemble the roof. The roof also needs uh, its structure. We will add that later. I glue the door step in place after I painted them in a kind of flat gray color, which is a acrylic mix of black and white. And I apply the same color also on this 0.4 millimeter plywood last step. I use uh, uh, patina powder from Noch 61165 which is a assortment of pastels, dry pastel crayons in powder. And I use the black and white from this set for weathering this footstep. Then I use the isopropanol to smear out and get the more, uh, get the, the touch I'm looking for. Now it gets very black and that is maybe not desired so then you can wipe some of that off with a cotton swab cotton pin until you get back down to you know, the original gray surfaces color surface color and this is what it looks like when done here are the window casing i'm gluing that in place with the quick set glue Apply it with the tweezers, otherwise your fingers would get caught in the facet glue for sure. <laughs> Mine did. The prototype had angular cut casing downward, so I'm going for that look as well. Let's continue with the roof while that is drying. This is a, a molding made from PVA glue on top of a Folmer plastic sheet. I have a tutorial on how to make these uh, roofs from PVA glue. I put a link up so you can watch that. Yes, the mold off will be mirrored compared to the original, but for a roof like this, a tiled roof, it doesn't matter because the mirror looks the same as the uh, original, so to say. So I glue that onto the balsa sheets with uh, PVA glue as well and put some weight on it and let it dry. Once the roof has dried, we paint it with the orange color I mix that orange color from uh, three acrylic colors, red, yellow, and white. Once I'm happy with the shade, I also add some water from my sprayer like this to thin the paint somewhat. Then it's just to brush on to 
the roof. Here are some interior I've been printing out on my printer. It's just an inkjet printer I have. This will give the impression that the lottery has some interesting prizes for the winners. Let's make the window sills now. The window sills on this building is really half of the shutter. The shutter is divided horizontally. I cut them from 0.4 mm thick plywood. Next is to make a hole for wires coming in to supply the LED. I use white LEDs to give some interior light in this building. Then we also need a thick black paper to fold a piece which prevents light leakage out in the roof and between the different section of the building. I took this brochure from Fly, Fly Car, you know, awesome slot cars and it's fixed also with the PVA glue to the balsa frame interior like this. I put some PVA glue on my finger and then I apply the PVA glue with a brush onto the truss. This is to be able to assemble the roof parts, front and back. Now the PVA glue has uh, uh, like an hour of drying time, so I make I use a bit of quick set glue to just make it stay in place until the PVA glue has hardened. The ridge tiles are made from the molds of the roof and glued in place using PVA glue. Once in place I apply a thin layer of grey paint over the entire roof finishing with black pastel powder in streaks and spots according to the prototype. If you get too much you can always smear it out and wipe it off with your finger. So this is what it looks like after second layer of weathering. Now I'm applying glue and some gravel around the building and then I fix the building to the diorama using drops of fast set glue. I place and fix the trees using PVA glue and then I'm starting to fix these are the bins lottery bins I fix them with fast set glue and then all the figures also with fast set glue This is a set from Noch 15563 which is uh, musicians. I needed two packs to get two accordions and one flute player. Unfortunately there were no violin players but I'll fix that to the next year. And we're done! This is the final result. Alright, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope you liked the tutorial and have use for the techniques with the balsa and the, the steel brush and, and all that. It's been very useful for me because I'm modeling a lot of this uh, since I have a Swedish theme on my, on my layout. I hope you liked the tutorial. If you did, please help others to find this video by giving it a thumbs up and sharing it on your favorite forums. If you got questions, anything about the theme for this video or the techniques, please post them in the comment field below and I will respond to them as soon as possible. If these videos helped you with your hobby, please remember that all of this happens just because a few of you 
viewers are supporting the channel. So if you want to be one of the good guys, get onto Patreon and uh, set up a, a, a support account there or get make a one-off donation via the PayPal dialogue found in the description for the video below. Please subscribe to the channel and you will get a notification once next video goes live. Until that happens, see ya!